There's quite a buzz in Calumet County. Some hardworking bees are creating delicious gourmet honey. And Allison's working hard as a beekeeper's assistant. Good morning. Hey, good morning. We're down here in Calumet County at one of the bee yards with Wisconsin Natural Acres Honey. Can you see them? They're kind of, they're getting oh, a little yeah. more active oh, now. Yeah. Buzzing about, but they've outfitted me with the beekeeper suit. Um, so I should be good to go. Just no sudden movements. We're with Doug Schultz, who is a bee wrangler. That's right. What does that mean? <clears throat> it's a fancy term for beekeeper. <laughs> there you go. That That's I'll all take it. it. <laughs> so this is one of the hives here. We don't want to open it up right now because it's still pretty early for them, right? Correct. Okay. Take us through what these different boxes are. This is a pollen trap, mm -hmm. so we can check the pollen, the nectar source coming in. Brood box where the bees are hatched. Brood box. Honey super. Honey super. Honey super. Okay. And a honey super is a honey box. All right. Allison? So this is where the yeah, go ahead, Rachel. He, he says he checks to see where the pollen came from. How does he know which flowers? We are going to do that. Okay, I'm sorry. We are going to look okay. at that <laughs> in about two minutes. So we'll take okay. a look at that. But first, when we were here last week, we were able to open up the hive and take a look at what was going on inside. So we're going to explore the brood box. Let's take a look. Here we're down to brood box number one, brood box number two. What does that mean? That's where the queen is and where they lay all the eggs and hatch. Okay. If you want to smoke over the top of that, beautiful. Some people like to smoke too much, and it's not good. Try to be gentle. Yeah, and I like to do that. That came as gentle as you can do it. <laughs> and then I always tap off the bees in front of the hive, and if you watch, they'll go right back in. Okay. It's getting loud now. Now, if you want to just... You're, you're doing that perfectly on back here. You got a new job. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go in here. You have to be very careful doing this. Typically, I will go from the outside in because you don't want to squish the queen or you just caused a lot of problem with the hive. Right. Okay, so I'm pull it out real slow. You see all these? That's capped brood. That's bees that are going to hatch out from the cells. And so I'll, this is not where they would have honey? Correct. Okay. They will pack it in here now. I'll be pulling off all the honey. And the fall asters and the golden rod and all that that's left, they will pack in here. And then we'll put honey in here for them to survive on the natural way. Okay. Okay. And just wondering if by chance I'd luck out and if you want me to find the queen I will, it'll take a little bit. I might. Well we looked for the we looked for the queen for a little while, but we uh we gave up. We gave up. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have one uh, marked that we'll show you in a little bit. But Rachel, this is the pollen um that we were talking about. Doug, this is the trap. How do you tell where they came from? Okay, there's right now goldenrod, fall asters, a lot of wildflower pollen coming in. Um, your clover and alfalfa has a darker color to it. Um, farmers have taken that off recently. Um, we can tell by the color and then mm -hmm. you can actually taste it and you can tell the taste, the flavor of the pollen too. Wow. It's sweeter when it's the clovers and alfalfa and okay. basswood and that type thing. So they get the nectar from the plant. That's what they use to make the honey. Right. And then this is what they take with them. Yep. That just naturally grabs on barbs on their legs. Huh. They bring it back to the hive. They go through a series of uh, wire mesh mm -hmm. and come up into the hive, and it knocks them off, knocks it off their legs. Very cool. interesting, isn't it? And yes. we showed uh, all those, all those bees. We were talking about this bee shortage. Yeah. What What do we think is causing that? I think if you ask the scientists, you'd have five scientists. You have five different answers. But my belief, it's overall stress on beehives these days. You have. Unfortunately, uh, more pesticides and uh, chemicals being sprayed. We have the mite, which is a major issue on honeybees. Um, I believe stress, even though migratory beekeepers have to do what they do, putting a, hives on trucks and going a thousand miles, that's hard on them. We, um, I, there are beekeepers that use bale of twine and burlap, which is soaked in pesticides and things. Mm -hmm. um, for their smokers, we use organic apple wood. Um, I think it's a combination of many things that are used 
and things are going on in the environment that are causing it, along and, with viruses. Right. And those are a lot of things that aren't affecting you, and that's why you aren't really seeing a shortage yet. That's our belief. Mm -hmm. we're, we're proud to say we are not. That doesn't mean it couldn't happen. Exactly. Okay. Well, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. So we are going to... Uh, Hang out here some more, Rachel. Taste some more honey. Uh, find out what happens to the bees once it gets cold out oh. and see if we can find that queen. So definitely stick around. Oh, we oh. will. <laughs> you stay in that thing, in that contraption. I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. See you later.